everyone and welcome back to my channel Miss Crochet and Coffee here and today I will be teaching you how to crochet. Now I did things a little backwards. I showed people how to graph a beanie. Now that's just because I get a lot of requests for how do I use and do my graphs and so I want to show that. But then I got a request over the weekend to actually show you the basics on how to start a crochet project. Um, so I figured why not? That's what this channel is for, right? Right. Crocheting and diamond painting are going to be the two major things you see on this channel right now. So today's video is for you crocheters. And so the first thing that comes into mind is picking out a yarn. You want to pick out the yarn that's best suited for the project that you're working on. Whether it be a baby blanket, whether it be a dishcloth, whether it be a sweater or a jacket or whatever you're making, you want to choose the best yarn. Now for this tutorial, I'm using a bulky yarn. It's just a regular bulky yarn. Um, I'm not even sure the name of it because as you can tell, it doesn't have a tag on it. I'm pretty sure it's pink. Again, I'm colorblind, so if it's not, please forgive me. Um, I'm only using this yarn to show you for this tutorial, like how to crochet. Normally, I would have more of a thought process into what yarn I'm using. You want to know what yarn, what color, what texture, what, you know, especially if you're making baby blankets, do you want a soft plushy yarn or do you want a thinner yarn, like they do make a thinner baby blanket yarn. Um, do you want, and yarn comes in different sizes, so do you want a size four, which is the regular size, or do you want a size six, which is super bulky? Um, first, you have to make the decision on what size and what kind of baby blanket you, you um, want to make, and then you choose a color. So you can make a baby blanket out of something like this, um, this is a Mandela cake from Walmart, which I picked up this morning. It was $4.98. And you get 590 yards in this versus like the bulky yarn, which I think you only get like 200, 212, I think. Again, I'm not 100% sure this one doesn't have a label on it. I just wanted to show you guys the basics on how to crochet. So first, grab that yarn and your crochet hook and let's get started. Now, at any point in time during the video, feel free to pause the video to practice what I'm showing you because that's the thing that's going to get you more sufficient and practice makes permanent. So you want to keep practicing what I'm showing you so that you know what to do when it comes time to actually make that first crochet project. So let's get started. All right. Um, first thing you want to do is you want to find the tail of your yarn. Now, a lot of them have a center pull. Um, if you get a regular Red Heart skein like this one, this is Pink Camo by Red Heart. It's a super saver. Um, I picked this up actually to do a dog sweater, so that's why it's conveniently sitting off to my side here. Um, and there's also one other side note. You see this little blanket right here on the pattern? If you didn't know, if you look on the inside of this paper, the pattern for that blanket is on the inside of there. Now, not all yarns do that, but Red Heart does. And they also give you their website where you can go buy a yarn. If you want to buy that yarn that they use, you can probably go on the website and find it. And it has all the information about that on the inside. So if you buy a regular skein of yarn, what you want to do, or what's going to be easiest to do is find the center pull. Now, a lot of people will use it from the outside and just let it spin around on the floor or whatever. But if you do that, then you're picking up all the dirt and whatever else is on the floor. And if you're like me, I have dogs. I have two big dogs. And the, if I put this on the floor, even if I were to just drop it real quick and pick it up, it's going to be covered in dog fur. No matter how many times you vacuum, there's dog fur everywhere. The dog fur sticks to everything but the dog. So you want to find your center pull. The center pull is going to be the area which this you would think is a center pull. It is not. It is just extra because I took that tag off. This is the center pull. It essentially does exactly what I said. It pulls from the center. And that will keep pulling from the center until you get to the very end, which is that little piece that you saw me tuck in there. That will essentially pull all that yarn that you need out of this way so it's not spinning all over the floor. And with Red Heart, the other thing I like is, one, they give you all the care instructions for the yarn for after you make the project, what hook size they suggest you use with it, don't iron, don't bleach. Um, but what I was looking for, it doesn't look like it's on this one. They used to have like a little picture that would show you what side the center pull is on. Some skeins have it, some skeins don't, but that's okay. This one doesn't have it, so we're just going to toss it to the side. So 
let's get to it. And guess what just happened? That's That yarn fell on the floor. So I guarantee you it's already covered in dog fur. All right. So the first thing you want to do is find your end, which is what we call a tail. The tail end of the yarn is the beginning of your project. So what I like to do is I take my hand and I put it, I, I drape it over my thumb. Just like that. So it looks like this. The next thing I do is I grab both pieces with my other hand and I literally just twist my thumb around. Just so it twists. See how it's all nice and twisted there? Now when you do that, if you take your pointer finger and stick it up through the hole where your thumb is, take the tail and bring it up so that it's laying just right on top of that. So it literally will lay right on top. Don't let go of that tail, whatever you do, because if you do, you'll pull it all the way through and that's not what you need. So you're going to lay that right on top of there and you're going to pinch it. So then you're going to grab that tail end again and the working yarn, which is the yarn that's coming from the skein of yarn. And you're just going to pull that through. And you see how it's tightening up and make a little knot there? That is called a slip stitch. That is going to be the beginning of most of all your projects. So if you didn't catch that the first time, please feel free to rewind this video or pause it so that you can give it a try. You're going to want to keep practicing that because uh, almost every project you do will start off with a slip stitch. I've known people not to use slip stitches and then when you go to make the project, the end of it comes out. So do yourself a favor, use a slip stitch. All right. So once you're done practicing that, let's move on to actually making stitches. So what you saw was that loop is super big and obviously I don't want my stitch to be that big. So what I did was I put my crochet hook in that loop and I pulled the tail and the working yarn and that will pull it as tight as I need it. Now you don't want to pull it tight up on the neck of the crochet hook because I don't know if you can tell, it's a little bit narrower than the back end of it. So I usually tighten it up back here so that it's a nice size. And then I'll loosen it up a little bit just to give it some way because then when you get up to your next row, you don't want your stitches to be too tight. Now relax when you're doing this because again, if your stitches are too tight, it's going to make it impossible for you to get through the next section. So then what I like to do, and I made up a little rhyme I say in my head whenever I'm teaching people, you have your working yarn. It goes far away to work. It comes back at night and you put it to bed. And the putting the bed part is pulling it through your loop. See how it went through the loop there? So let's try that again. Goes far away, comes back, puts it to bed. And now, if you can see, I have two stitches. You see these little V's right here? These are stitches. So you have how many stitches? One, two. So keep practicing that. Say we're going to do about 20. So we have three there. Four. Five. Six. Now remember, you got to stay seven. You got to stay relaxed when you do this. Eight, nine, ten. It's not a race. Take your time. Because you want to make sure those stitches are uniform. So you have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there. You now have 20 stitches. In it. And it looks like a braid, right? So you have your tail, your working chain, and your next stitch on the hook. That is how you start pretty much all crochet projects, unless it asks for like a magic circle or something. But for the most part, like if you're making a blanket, that's how you would start it. If you're making a dishcloth, that's how you would start it. And essentially today, I'm going to be showing you a, like a little swatch, which a swatch is a practice piece. If you're making something, you want to gauge it correctly. Like if with gauge, it means the size. So if you want to gauge it correctly, you make a practice swatch so that 
you know if you have the right gauge or not. Because if you're not using the right hook size, like for this yarn, I should be using a 6, but my sweet spot for my hook is a 5.5, a which is an I hook. Because all crochet hooks will have a letter and a number. So that's I, 5.5 milliliter, or millimeter. Milliliter is not liquid, Alicia. And then I use my nice clover hooks, which I'm pretty sure I got from, I want to say Michael's. And right now, I don't know if anybody else noticed, but finding a 5.5 is scarce nowadays. So I actually found them online, I think, and I'm pretty sure I ordered three of them. Two of them are missing. My, I'm pretty sure my couch ate them. But moving on. So now that you got to this part, pause the video here and practice. Practice your slip stitch. Practice chaining. This is what they call chaining. So please take a moment to pause the video Practice, take and pull all that out and practice doing it again. And keep doing it until you can get it to look something like this. Now, I'm not saying it has to be exactly perfect like this, but get it to look something like this. You want to make sure your tension stays the same the whole way throughout so that you have a nice clearing uh, start. And you want to make sure you can do that slip stitch because that's what's going to hold your project in place. So go ahead and pause the video here. Okay. So, if you did pause the video, welcome back. If you didn't, okay, well, hi. We're going to work on the next row. So, here we did 20 stitches. Now, depending on what stitch you're using tells you how to start your next row. There's a couple of different stitches, but there's three main stitches. There is single crochet, double crochet, and then there's a half double crochet, which I probably should have said before double. Anyways, so single, half double, double. Single crochet is one, half double is half, half of one, or one and a half, and then double is two. And I'll show you the difference here in a few minutes. So we're going to work from single crochet. If you're doing a single crochet, you see those little Vs? You would literally just skip one. For a single crochet, you skip one. So we're going to do one full row of single crochet. And I went kind of fast without telling you what I was doing, sorry. So I skip this one. I would skip this stitch and go into that stitch, okay? So, I'm going to skip that first one. I'm going to go into this one. And I like to go into how it has this string right here. I go into the top. I never go into the bottom. I go into the top. Some people go into the back. I find that to be a pain in the butt. So, I go through the top here. So, you skip that first one, go into that loop, and get that on your hook. See how that is? You get that on your hook. You yarn over. This is called a yarn over because you're literally pulling the yarn towards yourself. So you yarn over the hook. So yarn over, pull that through. So now you should have two loops on your hook that look like this. Now, you then are going to yarn over one more time, and you're going to pull through both those loops on your hook. So I yarned over, and I'm going to pull through. Now make sure you're not doing it too tight, because again, you don't want your stitches to be too tight. And I lost the hook, or the yarn there. So you want to pull it through. And that's what your stitch will look like. Right now, it looks like nothing. It looks like a jumbled mess, but trust the process. So then we're going to move on to our next stitch. We're going to do that again. We're going to go in the stitch. We're going to yarn over. We're going to pull that yarn over through the stitch to get two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through. And you're going to continue on doing that the whole way down till you get to the end. Now, if you need to take a moment to pause the video here, please feel free to do so so that you can practice this. If not, then you can just follow along with me. And we're going to make it all the way down to the end. So we're just going to single crochet the whole way down. Sorry if you hear groaning in the background. My dog is groaning. She groans when she lays down. I'm not sure why, but she does. So in the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. In the stitch, yarn over, pull through once, yarn over, 
pull through two. In the stitch, yarn over, pull through once, yarn over, pull through twice. In the stitch, yarn over, pull through once, yarn over, pull through twice. And again, if I'm going too fast, again, feel free to pause the video and practice because if you do not practice, you will not get it. What I what makes it look so easy when I do it is that I literally have been doing this for over 20 years. Even though I'm only 34, I was taught at a very young age how to do this and I essentially taught myself how to do everything else because as I've mentioned before in other videos, I was taught the starting chain by my grandmother before she passed and then I figured out everything else on my own. So, pull through, pull through, and pull through two. Go in, pull, yarn over, pull through, one, pull through two. Yarn up, nope, pull. Go in the stitch, yarn over, pull through once, yarn over, pull through twice. And then the last stitch, insert, yarn over, exit, yarn over, pull through two, and now you're here. And this is what your first row should look like. Still learning these camera angles. So that's your first row of single crochet. And it looks a little curved, but don't worry, as you get going, and this is a stiffer yarn because it's a super bulky yarn, just so it's easier for me to show you guys how to do this. As you keep going, it'll look like that. So, pause the video here and practice your single stitch or your single crochet stitch once you figure you got it down start the video up and i'll show you how to do another stitch if you're thinking you got it down all right let's continue on so for your next row we're going to do half double crochets now this is going to be done a little bit differently because you're not skipping a stitch except for this time you're actually creating your own height like you're you're making it longer so what you have to do, after you do that last single crochet, because you're doing a half double crochet stitch next, you're gonna chain two. One, two. And that's how you get to your, your next row, because then you're gonna turn your work, so it was facing this way. Now you're gonna have it facing this way. Because you have to essentially go through here. Okay? So. You change your two, and for a half double crochet, and we're going to go into this first stitch. Now, this row is going to be a little bit different because you've already started. You're not working on the starting chain. You're working on the actual like layer itself. So for the longest time, I always went through, well, let me move that so you can actually see. I always went through one of these. That's wrong. It took me years to realize I was doing it wrong. Thank you, YouTube. So once you got your chain two and you're ready to move on, you're going to yarn over. Where you're actually going is in the side of your stitch. Now you're not going down here. You're going right here because then when you go up, oh, sorry, wrong side, right here. Because when you go in, you want that, so move it that way. You want those that V to be sitting right on top of your hook, okay? So let's show you. Get that back on there. For a half double crochet, you're going to yarn over. You're going to go into that first stitch. Now remember, you're going right there. And you're going to go so that you're underneath both of them, not just one. You're going to go underneath both. You're going to yarn over one more time and pull through. So now you should have three loops on your hook, correct? So you do one, two, three. What you're going to do here is you're going to yarn over, and then you're going to pull through, pull this through those three loops. So one, two, three. Okay, so let's try that again. Now, because you're not making your next row, you don't have to chain two again. That was only because you're going up to your next row. You need to give it a uh, space to make the length that you need for that stitch. So for half doubles and double crochets, you'll chain two. For single crochets, you'll chain one or skip one. So if you were on the starting chain for a half double, you would skip two stitches. If you were on the starting chain for a double, you would skip two stitches. 
that's what gives your project height. Like that's how what makes it grow out. You have to make sure to remember to chain two at the end of those rows or to skip one or two on that starting chain. So let's get our next stitch working. So we're going to yarn over. And if, in case you forgot, you yarn over. You find where the stitch is going. And see this little black area right here? That's where you're going. You're going to go underneath those two stitches. Now every once in a while, it when you go to do it, it will pop out the top of that stitch, but you don't want to see that. You want to see two. So you're going to go all the way through. So you see one, two. Okay? So then you're going to yarn over again, pull through, and that should give you three loops on your hook. Again, if I'm going too fast or you need to practice it, pause the video. It's okay. I'll be here when you get back. Can you guess what we're going to do now? We're going to yarn over again, that's correct, and we're going to pull through. And you're just going to do that the whole way down until you get to the end. Again, if you need to pause the video, please feel free to do so. If not, and you want to roll with me, well, let's go. We're going to take this all the way down to the beginning. And again, you want to make sure that your stitches are all the same length and height, and I had to pull that out because I made a mistake not telling you guys anything, but I made the one stitch really big and I didn't like it. Um, so yeah, even those of us who've done this for years can make mistakes. So if you make a mistake, don't beat yourself up over it. It's all right. Just take it out and do it again. That's the great thing about crafting. You, there's, there's no pressure. Just if you make a mistake, do it again. Take the stitch out and do it again. And unlike with knitting where you have to take a whole row out just to fix one error, if there's, say, an error back that way, all I have to do is pull out, you know, this many stitches to get it. So we're going to just go the whole way down to the bottom so that I can show you what your next stitch is. So we're going to go, we're going to go. And to get your speed up, it takes a lot of practice. So just keep practicing those stitches. And we're almost to the bottom here. All right. So then now your project should look like this. Now the second row, which let me use this. This is your first row. See how it's all right here? This is your first row, and then there's a line, right? That's your second row. That's your half double crochets. So, again, pause the video here, take a second, practice that stitch, and I'll see you when it comes time to do the next row. All right, now that you have time to practice that stitch, how would you do? Hopefully you did good, because now it's time to move on to the next row. So the next row, I'm going to show you another stitch called a double crochet. And don't worry, if you can't remember the steps and process of doing a single half double and double crochet, I will have a slide at the end, or I will try to make a document and link it below so that you guys can get it. If you do need it, I will also have it up on my crochet pages on Facebook and Instagram. And you can find both of those at Miss Crochet and Coffee. I will link my two pages down below as well. So let's get started on our next row. And if you need more time, feel free to take as much time as you want. I'm not going anywhere. All right, so your next row. Before you start your next row, you have to do that chain two. Because if you don't do the chain two, then it won't make so much of this, then it'll just make a mess. So you want to make sure you do your chain two, okay? Because we're now doing a double crochet. So I did my chain two, I'm going to turn my work. And for a double crochet, it's a little bit different than a single, a little bit different than a half. So I'm going to show you how it's done. You're going to yarn over and you're going to go through and see how I yarned over? And when I yarned over, instead of going like this, 
which you saw how messy that is. You can't just go like, oh, okay, I'm going to go down here. No. I go right in front of it and go into the next stitch. And then you're going to yarn over again, which is going to kind of look like that. It kind of looks like it's off to the side. But that's okay, because that's what that little hook is for. So you're just going to turn your hook and pull it through that stitch. And again, you have three loops on your hook. That's kind of like with double crochet, or a half double crochet. Now, what makes this different is this is a double, one. Two, instead of going through all three of those loops on your hook, oh, sorry, we're a little blurry. Instead of going through all three loops on your hook, you're only going to go through two. It's called a double. That's how, you're, that's how I remember it. It's called a double, so you only do two. So you're going to go through two, and you're going to have two hoops look left on your hook. So what do you do with those? That's right. You yarn over, and you pull through. Let's try that one more time. We're going to yarn over. We're going to go into that stitch. And again, you want to make sure both of them are on your hook and not just one. Unless the pattern calls for it, but for learning to crochet, you want to go through both. You're going to yarn over again, and you're going to pull through. Now that you have the three loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Take a second to pause the video here to practice the double crochet. If you don't need a second, then you can just follow me along as I go to the end of this row. It's okay to need to stop and practice the stitch because I do work a little bit faster. So if you do need that extra moment to stop, pause, rewind the video, please feel free to do so. Watch it as many times as you need to. At least you're giving it a go and giving it a try. So I'm going to slow down here so I can show you guys again what I'm doing. So you're going to yarn over, pull through those stitches, yarn over, pull through, yarn over two, yarn over two. We're going to do that one more time. We're going to yarn over, go into there, yarn over, pull through. You're going to go through two stitches and go through two stitches. And again, this is called a double crochet. We're going to work this all the way down. And again, if you need to pause, stop, rewind, feel free to do so. Alright, and so with these last few stitches, I'm going to show you how to do this one more time. Alright, so then you're going to yarn over. You're going to insert, you're going to yarn over and pull through. You're then going to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over into your stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and then pull through two. Yarn over, insert into stitch, yarn over. Pull through, go through two, go through two. And last one, yarn over, go through, yarn over, pull through. Now you want to make sure you get all your strands because this one is a four strander, so there's more than one strand to get through the hook there. And then once you yarned over, you're going to go out this way, pull through two. Pull through two. And that is how you double crochet. So in this video, I showed you how to slip stitch, chain to get started with your project. We showed double, or I'm sorry, I showed single crochet, I showed double crochet, and then I saw, I'm sorry, single, half double, and then double. Can you see the size difference in those? Let me bring it a little bit closer for you. Sorry, my ring spin. Okay, so you have your single, which is this one here. 
and then your half double, and then your double. So depending on what project you're making, you're making, it's up to you whether or not you have your double, your half double, or your single stitch. A lot of people use uh, double crochet when they're stitching blankets because it works up really fast. Uh, it's only one fluid motion. Again, I can show you that, which when you get to the edge, remember, you gotta chain two. You gotta go up the ladder to make it bigger. So for the half double again, you're gonna yarn over, go inside the stitch, yarn over, pull that through, and then go through all three. Or you can use a single crochet, which is into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. Or the double, which is yarn over, pull into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. And just there alone, you can see the difference in what the stitches look like. I did half double here, single, double. Okay? Well, I hope this video was informative to you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up to let me know that you could understand what I was saying amongst my rambling and fumbling over my words. It's, I don't know why I'm doing that. I think I don't think I don't have enough coffee for today. But if this video was helpful to you, I would greatly appreciate a thumbs up to let me know that you liked it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it so that you can be notified every time I post a new video because I will randomly put up videos. And again, I don't know when I'm going to put them up. They just randomly come to me and I go, I should put up a video. So don't forget to hit that bell so you know when I put up new videos. I will continue tomorrow with some more how to crochet tips and tricks. But today, I just wanted to show you how to get started and how to work your way up to making into making something, whether it be a blanket, whether it be a dishcloth. This way is essentially how you would start to do that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And until my next video, I'll see you guys later. Bye.